ah, this time it, you know, worked the first time trying to do a video. Gotta love it. I know I keep saying, well, I have another camera in the other room. I might as well use that, but you guys know how it is. Anyway, uh, what's up, guys? Fabio here once again, and I want to welcome everybody back to another video. And today I'm continuing on. Uh, going to be doing a couple more TV series reviews, shows that I probably should have reviewed a while ago, and I just haven't gotten to them yet. And today I will be talking about Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Try saying that five times fast. This is one of the uh, Power Ranger knockoffs from the 90s that was uh, made by Deke. And at the time, Deke was owned by Disney. So Disney was trying to uh, rip off Power Rangers, you know, even be well before they owned it back in the day. Not once, but twice. Uh, this is the first one. The second one, unfortunately, is Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, we'll get to that one next. But, yeah. So, anyway, before I go any further, if anyone would like to help contribute to the channel by sending in a paid request such as this, you may do so down below in the description box. There is a link to my PayPal account. No amount is too big, no amount is too small. It does not have to be just a movie review. It could be a TV series or a cartoon or a comic book, video games, uh, music, random thoughts and rants and streams and commentaries and anything in between. That's what the paid request is set up for. So again, if you're interested, go ahead, send it in, and I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. And for those, I don't know why it skipped but it did i'm sorry about that folks but for those that have sent them in before thank you i greatly appreciate it, it means you guys actually care about what i say and do here on the channel and you want to see me try some different things um it also motivates me to keep wanting to make videos so it's a win-win for everybody <clears throat> you guys get more of the type of videos that you want to see and i keep making them and everybody, at the end of the day, goes home happy, just like they used to say at Blockbuster. But, Superhuman Samurai, I had to do that. Um, but, <clears throat> but, Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad, again, say that five times fast. Um, you know, I like this show for what it is. It is not nearly, and I know people are going to kind of scoff and everything at this, but it is not nearly as good as Power Rangers, I will say that. And I know people are like, really? Like, pff, really? Power Rangers? Really? Well, you know what? At least Saban, you know, the people that did Power Rangers, at least they were really good at what they were doing back then. Now, not so much. But back in the heyday of Power Rangers in the 90s, at least they were really good at what they did because the first year that Power Rangers was on, they made a billion dollars in toy sales. Uh, and VHS and merchandise and everything, and that continued throughout the 90s. And even when, you know, anime kind of took over mainstream with Dragon Ball Z and Pokemon, Power Rangers were still going strong. So it's not like it, you know, just completely dissipated. But, you know, at least Power Rangers was very good at what they did. But I like this okay. Um, it's the same concept. They take a Japanese TV series. This time it is uh, called Gridman, which Gridman, I want to say it was the people that did Ultraman. I want to say it's the same company, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and they took that action footage, the the fight footage and then they mix it in with American footage so it is pretty much the same thing as Power Rangers and oddly enough like I said this was produced by Deke and the reason why I say it like Deke is because that's how they would say it in the uh the logo at the end of every episode but Deke was pretty big in the 90s they at this time they were owned by Disney for a while in the 90s they were owned by the Walt Disney Company, and they put out a lot of different content. They were responsible for this show. They did a lot of uh, cartoons, like they did the Double Dragon cartoon back in the day. They did the one Battle Toads episode. They were responsible for some of the Sonic. I know you can't see them, but they're right there. 
They were responsible for some of the Sonic cartoons back in the day. And yeah, they were owned by Disney, I think, for the majority of the 90s. And then Disney sold it off. Um, and Mill Creek put these out on DVD. So I, uh, I think they dissolved into Cookie Jar. And then they dissolved into DHX Media. So I don't know who owns all this stuff now. But Mill Creek has put a lot of these shows out on DVD. So I guess they have some kind of a contract with DHX Media. But anyway, so Disney was trying to rip off Power Rangers before they owned Power Rangers. And oddly enough, this was originally going to be called Power Boy. So what do you think happened then? They got sued. Yes, Disney got sued. What a surprise. Deke, everyone involved got sued. And then they changed the name to Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. And I believe that part of the settlement was they could not air the show uh, during like the peak hours of child television, which is typically during the weekdays between 7 and 9. Well, at least it was back in the day um it was typically between seven and nine and then on the weekends it was between seven to noon so they couldn't air i think part of the 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 lawsuit settlement was they could not air the show during the peak childhood hours now you can come here on youtube and you can find like old commercials and promos and this show would come on at like five six in the morning so probably nobody watched it um, when it would air on the syndicated local affiliates, because this aired in syndication and also ABC. ABC, like I said, because they owned the company at the time, and Disney, I think that was right when Disney bought them, when Disney bought ABC in the 90s. That's how they were able to show it on ABC. So there was a loophole there, but I think for like the syndicated time they couldn't show it during the peak hours or something like i read something about that online but anyway so that's how it got the name of superhuman samurai cyber squad which is a really catchy name by the way so it worked there and the plot of the show i again i've never seen gridman i've never seen the japanese counterpart i probably never will because i'm not into that and i know people get mad when i say that but Hey, you know, me watching Sentai makes me appreciate Power Rangers more. So there you go. Um, the plot is, if I can remember, um, Matthew Lawrence. Yes, the Matthew Lawrence from the Lawrence Brothers, Mrs. Doubtfire, Boy Meets World, so on and so on and so forth and so forth, is the lead. And he is a whiz kid, and he can program video games. So one day, he gets... Uh, struck by a electrical surge he goes into the video game and he becomes the character servo which is from the sentai or the, the japanese series um and you find out that there is a alien warlord that is trying to take over the digital world by creating mega viruses which are the monsters in the show and they are going to try to take out cyberspace and the internet when the internet was really big in its infancy and all that kind of stuff so they can transform and go into the cyber world and become servo like they all can become servo and then they have these vehicles which go on to servo to make him into basically a megazord so there you go and that is the plot of the show again uh the internet in 19 this came on in what 94 yeah this started in 94 so the internet was brand spanking new at the time so it really took advantage. So they were, they kind of hit the honey pot on that one because the internet was brand spanking new people. This is when people started to get online. This is when computers started to become more affordable. And this is kind of based on the infancy of the internet and cyberspace and people, you know, getting into uh, the dot rec, you know, uh, message boards before message boards were a thing. And all that kind of stuff. So they really did hit the nail with that one. So they were able to kind of carve a niche for the show like Power Rangers did. But, you know, they kind of took advantage of some of the things that were going on in the real world at the time. So there you have it. Um, and it, it is basically the same as Power Rangers. They set up the episode. 
they're doing something in their everyday high school lives and then something goes on in cyberspace so they have to bounce back and forth and that's basically what the entire show <coughs> excuse me comprises of now there's no overarching story there's no like we're building up to something it's basically i think it's 50 yeah 53 episodes of just self-contained stories um there's a couple i think like multi-part episodes but they're not real. They're very loosely connected. It's not like yeah, part one, yeah, part two. Because I think like the first three episodes is kind of like the pilot, but they're very loosely connected. It's not like all right, end of part one, beginning of no. It's not like that at all. Um, they did this show very cheaply. They did this show with the goal in mind to sell toys, just like Power Rangers. But it's Disney, so they probably got even cheaper than Saban did. Um, but that was that was exactly the goal of this show was to compete with Power Rangers by trying out the same formula, which once again is taking action sequences from a Japanese TV series and splicing them up with American footage. Um, I don't think that there was any long term goals with this show. I think that they probably had a you know again fifty three episodes, which typically. A lot of these syndicated shows would either air as 13, 52, or 65, and I don't know where the extra episode came from. Maybe it was just a, a one-time type of deal for that. Um, I'm not sure, but I guess they you know, bought the footage. They cut up the footage as much as they could. They had a toy agreement there because I, I don't remember who did the toys. I, I, ha I think I had one of the toys. Um, and I don't know what happened to it, so yeah. And then they, you know, bought the syndicated time and then showed it on ABC, and then that was it. It was probably one of those shows that was bought and paid for, and they, you know, whatever numbers it did, it did, and whatever toys it did, it did, and then that was kind of it. And then they made a little bit of profit, and they moved on. Um, You know, that was pretty much the cut-and-dry version of it. It was like, okay, well... Let's try to do Power Rangers. Let's try to beat them at their own game. And it didn't really work that way. Because 94, 1994 was the height of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That was the year that they shut down Universal Studios. They shut down the freeway in LA, which never happens because people were trying to get to that show. Um, you could not find the toys anywhere. Like I remember my mom telling me, when, you know, around this time she was trying to get me Power Ranger toys and she couldn't find them anywhere. So you were not going to compete with that gargantuan machine. It was just something that was not going to happen. But they tried. I mean, you know, they had a noble effort. Uh, obviously, you know, they had the backing of Disney. So they had a little bit probably more wiggle room in certain things. And they were able to get away with a little bit more. Because it is, I would say it's a little bit more violent than Power Rangers because it was on in syndication. And I don't know what the deal was with syndication back then where they didn't really give a shit about what was on. Because, again, this show came on at like 5, 6 in the morning, so nobody was up anyway. So they were able to kind of get away with a little bit more because... Power Rangers, the first season was a little bit more violent. Um, they would like kick to the head and stuff like that. And then all the parents got butt hurt. So they couldn't kick to the head. They, I, I think a lot of it, like they couldn't like punch. They had to like open hand attack. And I don't know. They went all, all butt hurt for that. Because VR Troopers came on the same year. And obviously VR Troopers was on longer than this show. And it was more successful. VR Troopers was a little bit more violent with the Japanese footage. So, again, again, I can't talk. I'm so excited. I guess the syndicated stuff, they just said, well, fuck it. You know, those shows are bought and paid for. Um, so, we're not going to really care about them. Or parents didn't really. Again, I'm sure parents were. I mean, parents were probably getting up at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning in the 90s. I don't know. I was. I'm not a parent, so. Maybe they watched it. I don't know. But anyway, so it, it's a little bit more violent with the Japanese footage, I will say. But it's not like, you know, Evil Dead or a Friday the 13th movie. But, you know, they can kind of get more hits in and explode more and stuff like that. So, oh, well. 
But, you know, I do, again, I do like it for what it is. It's nothing special. Again, Power Rangers is way better. And I know, again, people are probably watching and scoffing and like, really? Like, this guy puts over Power Rangers? Like, this guy praises Power Rangers? Well, again, they were obviously very successful at what they did because 30 year, almost 30 years later, it's still on. And Superhuman Samurai is not. So that should tell you something. But I think the I think what kind of made this work a little bit was you had Matthew Lawrence at the time. The Lawrence brothers were really big. Uh, Joey was on Blossom at the time. And this was right before they did their series, Brotherly Love, which is a great underrated show, by the way. Um, another one that Disney Channel used to rerun all the time. He was in Mrs. Doubtfire the year before. And this is a couple years before he was on Boy Meets World. So they definitely used that to their advantage. And I think that probably tuned people in. It's like, oh, hey, this is Matthew Lawrence. Like, cool, this works. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I've never heard him talk about it. I mean, if I ever met him, I would, you know, ask about the show because I would probably be the only one to ask about that. But, you know, I would just be curious, you know, how did, how did that come about and what was that experience like? You know, I'm sure he's probably a little bit embarrassed about it, but Hey, I, you know, the check cleared. So who cares? Um, the other kids they're, they're there, you know, they probably just picked them out of a lineup. You know, okay, well, we need uh, two more guys and a girl. We got to even it out. And that's probably what it was. Now, the bad kid, because there's a kid that works with the villain. He was okay. You know, it seemed like they let him kind of have a little bit more fun and, and kind of cut loose a little bit, which was nice. And then Tim Curry, do they put it on the DVD here? I'm surprised that they didn't. Tim Curry does the voice of the lead villain. So that's another reason why I kind of like this, because not only do you have Matthew Lawrence in there, but you got Tim fucking Curry as the villain. So, yeah, you know, I do, I do like that. And then one of the dudes that was on this show ended up on uh, Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters. I guess they paid him. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> it is what it is. Um but at the end of the day, you know, I do like this show for what it is. The toys, the toys are pretty cool. Um, you know, they are, for some reason, they're a little bit pricey. I guess they either did not make that many of them or because this was kind of a quick in and out, flash in the pan type of show. Maybe they're worth a little bit more. Again, I would love to know. I would love someone to give me an explanation how the price guide works on a lot of this stuff. Because there's not really a price guide. It's just, yeah, that's 20 bucks. Well, why is it 20 bucks? Um, but I do like it for what it is, you know, at the end of the day. I do remember watching it as a kid. Um, I remember renting one of the, I don't remember which VHS. If, if I watched the episode, I could tell you. But I do remember renting one of the VHS tapes from Blockbuster back in the day. And I do remember catching this show here and there. And I'm glad that it came out on DVD. I mean, honestly, I don't mind having these. I, I would never get rid of them. Um, but is this a show that I would frequently rewatch? No, not really. Um, I did watch this last year. And again, I should have reviewed it, but I did not. And my mom and my brother were both like, oh, my God, it's, this is so terrible. Like, it's a Power Rangers knockoff. I'm like, well, it is. That was the whole idea of it. But. I don't think it's the worst show ever made. Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters is way worse than this. But it has a little bit of a charm. Again, the Japanese footage, the fact that Matthew Lawrence is the lead, Tim Curry's the villain. Um, you know, it, it's not as bad as people say. The theme song is really catchy. The toys are pretty cool. So this show kind of made its little mark in the annals of 90s kids television. Now, I don't know, like, the DVDs, I don't know if, like, that's how the show looked, but it does look like they slowed it down a little bit. Like, I don't know if they used a PAL source or whatever, or they just remastered them shitty, but they do look a little off, the DVDs. Like, the VHS looks more natural, so again, I don't know if the master tapes were PAL sourced, or they sped it up or slowed it down for whatever reason, but that's just a little word to the wise. Now, I don't know if these are still in print because these came out in 2013, um, but 
when I got these, they were pretty cheap. So you might be able to find them on eBay or something pretty cheap again. I don't know what the print status is on these. It is Mill Creek, and I know they only get the rights for a certain amount of time. So maybe they are out of print, maybe not. But I think they're all here on YouTube for free, if I'm not mistaken. So if you're really curious about the show and you want to watch it for free, it's on YouTube. If you want to be cool like like me and support physical media, you can find these DVDs, I'm sure, used or whatever. Uh, not that expensive. But anyway, I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Superhuman Samurai Cyber Squad. Next will be the last TV show that I'm going to be reviewing for now. And unfortunately, it is Tattooed Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. So pray for me on that one. Thank you guys for watching. As always, take care. And we will talk later on. See you.